Hey guys, today's video is about Wowivid, and this is a doubled in seven inch non Android head unit. So, this does do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And what makes this particular head unit special is that it has a mechanical drive which reads CDs and DVDs. And I haven't seen one of those for a while, so let's see what it's like. So who is Wowivid? Well, to be honest, I actually have absolutely no idea, but what I can tell you is that they have multiple products on Amazon. And what does that mean? It means that you have an Amazon warranty with these devices. Now, obviously they haven't done a lot with uh, marketing on the box. It is very basic. In fact, I had to actually write the word Wowivid on the brown box so that I actually remembered what it was. But that's irrelevant. It's all about what's inside the box. Now don't forget, I don't get paid to endorse any companies or products, so this review is going to be completely based on my own opinion whilst using and installing this device. Right, let's get it out of the box and have a look. And here it is. Now, this is actually quite interesting. So what we do have is some actual physical buttons, which is very nice on here, and a physical volume knob as well, which is really, really nice. You can see from the front of this unit as well, is it has the slot for the DVD and CD, which is absolutely amazing. You also have a micro SD card slot up here, a built-in microphone and a reset button, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input and a USB port. So this actually has quite a lot of input options, which is really nice to see. And on the back, we have the main loom entry point here. We've got rear and front camera inputs. We've got a subwoofer pre-out here, and we've got front left, front right pre-outs over here as well. And then you've got a video input and two video outputs as well, if you have rear screens on your headrests. You also have a FM antenna input over here and a microphone input here. Also in the box you got the user manual, some brackets and the uh, wiring loom with uh, loose wires. So I'm actually going to have to make a loom to connect it to an ISO. Let's see if it actually fits in a cage though, that's the big test. So it's got the usual Chinese head unit problem and that is that they've designed it with the head which is too thick so it's going to protrude from the dashboard this much because the big branded head units will go much deeper into the cage but I'm pretty confident I can work out a way around that. So what I've done is I've got the uh, generic Saab 93 fitting kit with the outer bezel and I've wedged the head unit into this without a cage and really what we would need to do is just screw a bracket on this plastic and into one of these holes uh, just to hold it into this uh, plastic bracket and then that will make sure that it stays in place and this bezel which actually came with the head unit um, kind of fills in the blanks uh, around so it does actually look all right okay let me go into the car and check it out And here it is installed in the Saab 93. And to be fair, it almost looks factory. The only issue with the way that it's fitted is the bezel uh, that came with the actual unit doesn't quite fit the Saab 93 kit. So it's overhanging on the bottom here. Now I could fix that if I could be bothered by cutting a bit of the uh, bezel off so it actually slots into the Saab 93 kit, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you it as it is at the moment. It does look pretty. It does look kind of factory and obviously with the physical buttons and the knob that does assist with that functionality. Right, let's switch it on and see how quickly it boots up. DVD video and it's gone directly to the radio. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the home screen and show you what it looks like from the dashboard perspective. Well, let's talk about look and feel as we normally do. The way that it sits in the car we've already really spoken about, but I will highlight the fact that the physical buttons do light up in green or uh, you do have a selection of colors that you can get them to light up to match your vehicle, which is cool. And the way that the screen actually looks is really nice. Now, obviously we're dealing with a black background with uh, light 
coloured icons and the contrast between them is really good. The, the blues are really vivid and they're sharp. The text is sharp so it actually does look really really nice. I, I really like the dashboard on this actually. The blue and the black really does make it stand out, makes it look modern. So on the dashboard here uh, we have a widget with the time and date which I clearly haven't set. The widget up here on the top right has the uh, track that it's connected to Bluetooth on my phone, but also that will change to radio. So if I hit radio um, and then go back home, you can see that it's actually um, showing the radio station as well. Now, I will say that the actual radio app doesn't actually have RDS, so it's not going to show you the radio station names, which is quite annoying, but it does function as a radio, you get to choose the frequency etc and you, and you get to uh, save those frequencies into these buttons at the top so that's nice and easy. The second option here is disc, so that's for CDs and DVDs, uh, but I mean who owns DVDs and CDs these days? Uh, not me. Uh, however, I do own Blu-rays and one of my Blu-rays which is Beauty and the Beast is a double play and double play means that they give you the Blu-ray but they also give you a DVD so I'm going to use this to test the unit. It's been a long time since I've done this. Ooh, let's see what happens. It's gone to DVD video. You can hear the disc spinning up. This is kind of exciting. You can hear it reading the disc. Oh, look at that, it's playing. What's going on? I saw a girl in the castle. See, I told ya. <laughs> Irresponsible. Tell me care. Got a little bit into it there, but it works really well, and uh, you can actually skip the chapters of the DVD uh, using the steering wheel controls as well, which is really nice. Actually, the first time I have ever used a DVD in a, in a head unit, I didn't. I know that they used to come with them all the time, but I've never actually used one. Uh, and it's pretty cool. Now, don't forget that this head unit does actually have video out on it as well. So if you wanted to, uh, they are analog RCA composite video output, but you can run the signal uh, to uh, screens on the back of your car if you have those. From a DVD and I assume a CD perspective, works totally fine. Okay, so BT obviously means Bluetooth. You can make and receive phone calls using Bluetooth. It does have that external microphone input as well. So you can actually use a proper external microphone with this. And if we go to music, it will play music music from your phone via Bluetooth and you can control it here and you can control it using your steering wheel controls as well so that's cool. USB obviously you just stick a USB stick of mp3s in here and you can play them nice and easy and the same with the SD cards you stick a micro SD card slot in the top here with some mp3s and you can play music or video actually on that so music and video on USB and SD. Then if we slide across we got some more stuff Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, obviously the biggest selling point of this unit. They're both wired, so you actually have to physically plug the cable into the uh, USB port uh, and then it'll work. Then you have AutoLink and iOS Mirror, which is mirroring software for Android and for Apple iPhones as well. Then you've got the setup options, which I'll go into in a second. The auxiliary in is uh, this aux on the front here. Wallpaper just enables you to choose a few different backgrounds for the device, nice and simple. All right, let's actually try out Android Auto. So I'm gonna plug my phone into the USB port. Connecting. And here you go, like it's full Android Auto, it's really good, no lag whatsoever, everything functions as, it's, as it should. You can see I'm listening to Spotify here, if I uh, tap the map it will go to the map, if I hit this icon here it will go and it will show me all of the other apps that are actually compatible, but really um, it's perfect and, and uh, I can listen to all my music straight through this very, very easily indeed. So if you don't mind having your phone actually connected to it via USB, uh, this is actually awesome. And it gives you complete compatibility with uh, Android Auto. But I'll uh, show you Apple CarPlay now. So I'm just gonna plug my iPhone into this. Connecting iPhone. So straight away you've got full Apple CarPlay. And again, you can just access all of your apps here like this, no lag whatsoever. All of the apps uh, compatible with Apple CarPlay are there on your screen, plug and play. Really easy, again, all you need to do is just plug your phone in, that's it. Right, let me show you the menu. So if you're going to set up, um, it just looks like this. It's quite self-explanatory, really. Uh, the key light section here allows you to change the color of these buttons uh, to match whatever interior of your car that you have, so nice and easy. You've got the 
background image setting you've got your steering wheel control setting so this is how you match the steering wheel controls with this unit now there was one issue that i experienced with this uh, the it won't detect volume down on the steering wheel for some reason it's just not detecting that input it detects volume up and the other two buttons for next and backtrack uh, but it will not detect volume down so that's pretty annoying i'm not really that fussed because it has the volume knob but that is a little bit sad that it doesn't do that because it's almost perfect otherwise. Right, really there's only one thing left to talk about and that is the sound quality. So I'm gonna show you what we have here. This does have DSP, which is unusual for a budget head unit like this. But if we go into the sound settings here, you can see that it has these options here. So we'll start with the equalizer. If you have a look at it at face value, you might think it's a 10 band graphic equalizer and you'd be wrong because it actually has another page and another page of frequencies. It has a 30 band graphic equalizer and it does actually filter the sound on each of those frequencies. I've tested it. You can really change each individual frequency and it really does change the sound in the car. I mean, it's probably overcomplicated being 30 bands, but uh, it does give you really loads and loads of control over how it's gonna sound in your car. And um, they do give you, give you some presets. I don't like any of the presets, I had to change them. But uh, the fact of the matter is, it sounds excellent. Like, I mean, it really does. For such a cheap unit, it's uncanny how good it sounds. Anyway, so that's, that's your graphic equalizer. Uh, you also have your standard balance, so you've got um, fade and a balance here as well. You've got some bass control where you can up the gain and uh, the frequency cutoff for, uh, for the bass. Under Emperor, you can change the delay for each individual speaker. And under Filter, you can change the actual frequency bands as well here as well. So in all, this is actually a really, really good head unit for control of audio. But for the money, it's crazy good. I'm not gonna give it any scores because it's not an Android head unit, but I will say it's currently $200 on Amazon, but there's a $40 voucher on Amazon currently, which means you can get this head unit for $160. And that means you get a DVD player, an Android Auto, an Apple CarPlay, and a really, really good sound system with DSP uh, for $160, which is an amazing value head unit. If you've got any head units that you would like me to review, just let me know what the brands are and I can see what I can do. And obviously, if you like this kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot and I will be reviewing quite a lot more.